Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira, and today we're back working in the abandoned coffee shop. Now we've done a lot of work on the inside, that's been the bulk of my tutorials for the past months, but today we are going to be focusing on the outside. I've known for a long time that I've wanted to put graffiti on these brick walls, but I didn't quite know how to do it. So in this video, I'm going to be exploring some ideas, trying out some techniques, and crossing my fingers that I do not ruin this brick wall, because I do really like it how it is now. I like all the textures, I like the holes in the wall, and I really just like it how it is, but with the abandoned look, I just want to add to that. So the first thing I did is I looked up a few videos on graffiti and I know that um, there's probably some controversy around graffiti that some people see it as vandalism, some people see it as art. I definitely think it can be both. If you are doing graffiti in the right places, it can definitely be an art. And a lot of the videos that I was watching, they were outlining ways that you can um, just try out graffiti on your own and so I was following those I learned how to do a tag which is basically your name written in like one spray of spray paint um, very simple and then there were some more complicated types and it was just really fascinating to learn the techniques I also learned that there are different spray nibs and so usually like I used to think like how can you make art with a can of spray paint I don't understand how it can be so exact and make such straight lines or like refined lines but in watching the videos I learned there's different nibs that you can you can take off the um, factory nib off of the spray paint and put on a new one so for this reason I decided not to use an airbrush because a lot of people suggested a miniature airbrush which is a great idea because it would give kind of the fuzzy paint effect but um, I really didn't think that I could put different nibs on a miniature airbrush and so I I decided to just try and paint these techniques by hand and I also tried out um, some different designs like I have the skull guy and he ends up looking like he has a hat on <laughs> because I didn't like that his skull was so skinny I tried like a little spray bottle um, just trying some different techniques to figure out what I want on the wall and then I made a pattern of the wall so I could kind of plan out because I really only have one shot at this unless I want to repaint the entire wall so I was trying to plan out what I wanted to put on there. Now, um, a lot of these little sayings, I know like the one in the corner that says don't drink looks like a prohibition message, but it's not. It has to do with the story of the abandoned coffee shop, which I am currently writing. So stay tuned for that. Um, I didn't actually end up going with my design that I put on the paper. I decided in the spirit of graffiti to be a little bit more free with it and because there was that brick missing in the wall I decided to use it as the eye hole for the skull. I thought that was really cool and if I was actually going to graffiti a wall and I saw the hole I would definitely use it as the eye socket for the skull. So that's what I decided. I also wanted to, um, as I was researching uh, walls that were graffitied, I um, wanted to make some parts that looked like it had been blocked out. So that's what I'm doing with the black blob there. I'm using a really cheap kids watercolor brush. It's that kind of brush that has all plastic nibs and it's very, it's not great to paint with but to make it look like there was overspray from the spray can what I'm doing is I'm dabbing the edges around wherever I put the color and now I'm using a really refined brush to make some spray paint drips that's another characteristic of graffiti that I found really interesting is of course if you hold the paint can in one spot too long the paint will pull and because of gravity it will pull it down towards the bottom of whatever your canvas happens to be. So both of the, these brushes I'm going to be using throughout the entire process. The really cheap kids watercolor brush and this more fine tipped brush to make the drips. And I really like how this turned out. I think it does look as though um, someone just sprayed a lot of black paint to try and cover something up on the wall. 
Now another technique I learned about while researching and watching some videos on graffiti is the roller technique and this is where they actually use a paint roller to roll big block letters onto a wall. And so to kind of emulate that I got a wide brush so this would probably be a six inch roller in um, like real life and it's going to be very blocked out letters. I, when I drew it on the wall, I drew very rounded letters and I realized I have to think in terms of what the roller would be doing. And it's very difficult to get a rounded letter with a roller and so I had to kind of paint in straight lines. Also, I wanted to make sure that I didn't go back and um, fill in the gaps in the bricks because the roller would just roll over the grout lines. Now to make a straight line of graffiti, I got a brush that's about the width that I would want my um, spray paint line to be. And I'm using bright neon colors um, and this is because a that's what I see a lot in graffiti, especially on a dark brick wall like this. You would probably see more bright colors because it's going to stand out. The whole point of graffiti is for your artwork and your tags to be seen. And so that's why I'm using bright neon colors. For this little skull, I'm just kind of doing the, uh, an outline. And whenever I am done with that, I'm going to use the cheap watercolor brush to go all around it to make it look like there is overspray from the paint can. And I want to make sure I do get in the grout lines whenever I am thinking about using a spray can because spray paint will get on the brick and it will get in the grout lines. So kind of think about the painting method in real life, what parts of the wall it would hit, what parts of the wall it would fill in. And even when I'm doing these drip lines, I'm making sure anywhere it's dripped, um, it kind of also gets into the grout line and spreads out horizontally because paint um, will def it's kind of like a liquid, so it would spread out along the horizontal grout line. So kind of think of your physics and your gravity. And also, I've just found that in miniatures, if you want to make something look realistic, you need to think about and understand the way it's made in real life before you can translate it into miniatures. So keep that in mind. So this is how my little skull guy turned out. I do the um, words for the next phrase in the same exact manner. I just use a different color, so I use this bright pink. And um, yeah, I really like how it turned out. And so it says, don't drink, don't breathe. And that will make more sense again, like I said, once um, you understand the story of the coffee shop. So now I feel like the paint is just a little bit too bright. Of course, this is not going to be brand new graffiti. It's going to be newer than the coffee shop, but I want to push back the brightness. So I'm using some chalk pastel and I'm using a brownish reddish color that kind of matches the brick. It doesn't match exactly but it's going to take down the brightness of the paint. And this is because I want it to look like part of the wall, not just paint sitting on top of the wall. So this was kind of a long drawn out process and I also used a little bit of black here and there, but um, you can definitely see the difference between the word drink and the word don't. It kind of helps it blend in more with the project. And I did that on top of each and every piece. So on the other side of the coffee shop, I was a little bit more free with it. I didn't pre-plan, I just kind of did whatever I felt like. And I wanted to do kind of a more Banksy vibe with this tree. And he does a lot of black shadows with flat color. And so I just kind of looked up some of his artwork. I didn't copy any of his artwork exactly. I feel like this is kind of a rural town and so someone may be trying to um, copy him but doesn't quite have the technique or quite have the skills or materials. So it's looking a little messy, but I wanted to try it out anyway. And also with the heart, I did kind of a dab spray paint type technique on top of the pink because it was such a large area they'd have to go over it and over it with the spray can so I dabbed a lot of pink on there with that cheap brush. 
So here is the tree after I've done some drips, I've done some overspray with the cheap brush, and then I also wanted to add a Bentley House Minis tag on the bottom, and I wanted to have at the top of the B and at the end of the M some kind of really harsh spray areas where I could make it drip. And then of course, just like before, I aged it with the chalk pastel. And because I used chalk pastel, I decided to spray the entire thing with a matte finish, and this just kind of keeps the pastel from coming off on your hands while handling the project. So that's it. Let me know what you guys think. Did I overdo it? Or do you think it's just right? Are you interested in the story? Do you think you figured it out? Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Also, if you're interested in the brick tutorial, I will leave a link to that um, below as well because you might be like, hey, I want to try this out, but I need a brick wall. So I have that tutorial for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this and it was really fun. I had a lot of fun researching graffiti, so um, if you do try this out, I highly suggest doing some of that research on your own because it does really help you understand the process and um, the techniques that those artists use. I hope you guys have an amazing week. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!